Hi there, my name is John Kirkby and over the last 18 months as I journeyed out of Christians Against Poverty after founding it 25 years ago, I've been on a mission. I've been asking and seeking Jesus for some answers and some ideas to help with one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem, that is in our churches and in our own lives as Christians. I've been looking at what one thing could we all do that could transform our churches could transform our faith and could make such a significant advancement for the kingdom of God. So nothing massive at all. The brutal truth, the problem we seek to solve is big, it's vast. And to be honest, it's the majority of Christians are not engaging in others finding Christ as their personal saviour. Can I ask you just now to ask yourself, <clears throat> When did you last play a significant part in an individual finding Jesus Christ as their personal saviour? Just hold that for a minute. When did you, you, last play a significant part in someone finding Jesus Christ as their personal saviour? Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would open our eyes to see, you would open our ears to hear, you would open our minds to understand, and that you would open our hearts to receive from you as we look at how we may be used by you to play a significant part in people finding Jesus as their personal saviour. Amen. So here's the problem laid bare. This is the Evangelical Alliance research from 2020. Here are the answers to the question that Christians gave when asked what were the biggest barriers to them sharing faith. As you can see, 43% said not enough significant relationships with non-Christians. 41% were unsure of difficult questions and don't feel equipped to share their faith. And 21% feared rejection or appear indifferent. That means that a staggering seven, eight, or maybe nine out of 10 of us are not sharing our faith. And any one of those things will take you out. And this is the problem we feel called to tackle. Because Jesus, when he started his ministry and he went into the synagogue, he selected a scroll he selected one of perhaps 50 scrolls, and it was a big scroll. It was the scroll of Isaiah. He then unrolled it and travelled through it until he arrived at what we know is Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. And this is what he said. He said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. This is why the movement we are starting, the movement that we are believing will grow, is called the Isaiah 61 movement. Our fundamental belief is that this is for all of us. Jesus goes on. He says that he want to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to... Proclaim freedom for the prisoners, the recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. We believe everyone needs Jesus. In our society today, in your street, in your community, there are people who are prisoners, prisoners to life, prisoners to unfulfilled and great disappointment, who can't see why they're here who are bound up and locked up with the stresses and strains of this life on their own without Jesus in their life. Never mind the eternal life that's promised and a relationship with Jesus Christ. We believe we are all created in Jesus' image, that his spirit is within all of us and that we are designed and we, me and you, all of us, are anointed to preach the Good news. 
Our mission at Isaiah 61, and it is bold, is to see every church, every Christian, and every ministry confidently sharing life, sharing faith, and sharing Jesus. We've developed a reasonably simple and a reasonably accessible i61M app that's helping every Christian to engage in the journey together using this innovative app so that you can begin to share your life and to share your faith and in doing so begin to share Jesus. So this app, what does it do? Well, it helps you through these three stages of sharing your life, sharing your faith and sharing Jesus. It works on the, the couch to 5K principle that says, I can't run 5K, but I can jog between a few lampposts. And then you jog between a few lampposts and you go, oh, maybe I can do a few more. And then maybe I could run for a minute and then two and then five and then seven. And before you know it, over a period of months, you're running 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and eventually you're running 35 minutes and you've actually run a 5K. But you didn't start out by just trying to run a 5K. And that's the principle of the Isaiah 61. It's a journey. You begin where you are. You attempt to do something that everybody can do. So before I go any further, I just want to take a moment just to thank Simon for his warmth and encouragement to me over this last 18 months as I've journeyed with the Isaiah 61 movement idea. His enthusiasm, his encouragement has meant so much to me as I began tentatively to see if Jesus was calling me to do this. And I am absolutely amazed and delighted that today we are launching the first ever trial of the Isaiah 61 app and the Isaiah 61 process. Listen, we know that the app is not perfect. We know that the process is not completed. We know that we've a long way to go. But what a joy that you get the first group of people ever to get involved in this app. So this app is available through the Curry's website. Instructions are there, it ends up on your phone. We would ask if in this trial period, if you could resist Facebook and Twitter and social media, please share it with friends, let others know what you're doing. Please make sure that you enjoy this journey with us, Isaiah 61. So thank you, Kerry. Thank you for your warmth and your welcome over the years to me. And I'm praying for you. I'm expecting things to go well. So the app is actually ready to go on the App Store and ready to go on Google and Android. But listen, that's not how you get it. It's not available to everybody. It's just available to you. So please, will you help us over the coming few weeks and months to help us develop this app? to make it better. Send us, let us know how it works, what we could do better, how we could improve it. We'll take all the feedback and then you will be part of what we do then in the autumn. We've got 15 to 20 trials with other churches and social action ministries and in the new year of 2023, we're gonna throw this wider open and who knows how many churches and ministries will get involved. But we'll all come back to the first trial here at Bracknell. So what you do and how you respond to this is really, really, really important. And here's why we believe we should all share our life. This video comes directly from the resources within the app. Have a look at this. So why share life? Let's just remind ourselves of the actual problem. 67% of Christians say they struggle with sharing their faith. Now, there are some people who are gifted and can go straight into evangelism. It's wonderful to see them in action, but that's not me. And the stats say that that's really the vast majority of us. That's not us. So why are we going to share our life first? Well, when you look at the story of Jesus and the woman at the well in John 4, you see that Jesus approaches this, this woman and it doesn't go straight into him being the son of man. He begins to talk to her. They have a drink together. And in that conversation, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to this lady that there is something very, very special about Jesus. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting any of us are Jesus. But what I am saying is that Jesus began to share his life himself with someone first before he then revealed himself as the Son of Man. 
So we feel that in Isaiah 61, that that sense of sharing your life first is fantastic. Jesus also, in the parable of the seeds, where seeds grow best, he said that they grow best in soil, in good soil. And we have seen and we are encouraged that by sharing your life first, by becoming a friend, by building a relationship with someone who gets to know you, when you're interested in other people, you're creating some brilliant, brilliant soil. And in that soil, the Holy Spirit and yourself will be able to plant seeds and they will be fruitful and they will grow. But first of all, you have to prepare the ground. And sharing your life, building friendships and relationships is where this soil is best prepared for the seed that you're going to sow later on. When I look at my own life, um, yeah, when I was 30 years old, I was in a desperate place. My marriage was failing. I had huge debts. I was, yeah, I was completely in a mess. But one man called Paul, I don't think he knew what he was doing at the time, but he was actually doing this sharing life first. When I first met him, he was just interested in me. He was kind, he was compassionate, he listened a lot. He asked me questions and in that I now see that he was sharing his life. He was preparing the soil. And also I noticed there was something different about Paul. There was something different about him. He was unusual. What was that? That was the Holy Spirit within him and within me beginning to show me there was something about this guy that was special. And of course he went on to share his faith and eventually I found Christ 30 years ago. We believe passionately that relationships and friendships are the soil in which Jesus, by his Holy Spirit, will plant some seeds and fruit will come. So as you begin the journey of sharing your life, relax. You're just sharing who you are with people and beginning this amazing journey of sharing your life, then sharing your faith and then sharing Jesus. Enjoy, relax and share your life. So there you have it. Share your life with others. And this is what I've been doing for over two years now. Two years ago, I signed up as a frontline police chaplain. Here's the photo of Johnny Boy. I go out with the police. I spend Friday nights working with the police, with them on their response. And listen, I've learned over the last couple of years that I can really share my life with people. I can be interested in them. I can listen about their lives and their challenges and their difficulties. And I can share my life and I can share my journey. I can also share confidently now that I am a Christian, that I have faith in what Jesus has done in my life. I am sharing my life with others. And also, Lizzie and I have set up a local community group. There are three rows of terrace houses is where we live. We live in the middle and we just began it very small. Over the last two years, it has grown and has become a wonderful community group. We organize all sorts of things. We do litter picks. We've got a grant and we've planted loads of trees in the area. We've gone and cleared our backyards out. We've had a quiz night. We've done a carol service. We've done all sorts. We are creating community. And in that work, in that sharing my life, in doing that, I've got some wonderful new friends. I've got people who I know, people who know me that I've been interested in them and I've shared my life. And I've realized over the last couple of years that people are open for me to share my faith. It's my faith, how Jesus works with me, what he's done in my life, that's all I've done. I just simply shared my life and after sharing my life, I began to share Jesus. And there is a cost to this. Um, at the time of filming, um, in a couple of days, we're having one of our big area cleanups. We've got a skip coming and I've got to organise and cajole people to join me on Saturday morning. And actually, we're going to clear some gardens out for some people who are really struggling and Liz is going to do some baking sandwiches. Do I really want to do that on a Saturday morning? No. But I've seen the fruit of it and I've pushed myself, I've pushed myself out of my comfort zone just to be Johnny Boy and to share my life. We've got, a we've got the Jubilee coming up, the Platinum Jubilee for the Queen. We've got a picnic in the park. I'm organising all sorts of stuff. But I'm sharing my life and I'm sharing it with really lovely people. And they're sharing theirs with me. 
and it has given us a platform upon which we can make a difference. Here's some photos of some of the things we've done. I just want to be honest with you, this is not a simple thing. It's not a nil cost. There is some cost involved in sharing your life with others, in creating space to develop friendships and putting other people before your own comfort. Trust me, I know about that cost. And the app helps you set yourself some goals. It helps you say to yourself that over the next month I'm going to let someone know at work that I'm a Christian or I'm going to invite a friend to come round and have a, have a glass of wine. I'm going to reach out to that neighbour that you've seen for 20 years and you're just going to say, would you like to come round for a coffee? You set yourself some simple goals in the app and the app will then remind you. But really, really important, you need to be doing this in community. You need to be some accountability around what you said you were going to do and what you've actually done. Now, of course, God's grace is sufficient for all of us, but we do need to begin this journey. It won't happen without you deciding to do something. I want to encourage you. It is exciting. It really is exciting to see God use you. It is occasionally a little bit frightening. And the nerves and the fear, it is all there. But I would say feel the fear and just have a go anyway. Don't throw away your confidence. And then as you begin to build new friendships and existing friendships deepen, you then begin to intermingle with sharing your life. You begin to share your faith. Now listen, it's your faith. This is not a theological expose of what it is to be a Christian. That's not what you, and certainly what I'm not equipped to do. But I can certainly talk about my faith. I can talk about my journey. I can let people know I'm a Christian. I can do all those things. I can say that I'm a Christian now and I just tell people. I'm not ashamed of it. I tell people I go to church. I tell people that Jesus has been very gracious to me, that I'm blessed as a family. I talk about my faith. I share my faith. And that's the next stage. As you have worked and shared your life, you are beginning to create some really good ground that you can now begin to share your faith. Sharing your life, your story of Jesus and how he's impacted you and what it means to pray and the miracles you've seen is really, really inspiring to other people. And here's the truth. It's your faith. It's not anybody else's. You don't have to fully understand the why. You're just explaining the impact and it is incredibly powerful. So we're just going to watch another short video and this is why you should share your faith. And again, this is a resource that is on the app. Okay then, why should we share our faith? Notice it's our faith. Well, first of all, we're called by Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples. It's quite a challenge. It is a make. It's quite a come on, let's do it. And I've checked. Uh, all the world includes your street. It includes your friends. It includes your work colleagues. It's all. And we are told to make disciples. But I hope you've noticed as we speak about this, we're talking about you sharing your faith. And the reason why we see this as so powerful is that every single one of us, we have our faith. How do you engage with faith? We're going to be talking a little bit about, more about that when we look at the how. So your faith is what you're sharing. Now, you can hide away. I believe that God has put in all of us a massive amount of fruit. And in the Bible, in Luke 12, it talks about basically someone who has got lots of seed and he pulls his barn down and he builds bigger barns and he just saves the seed for himself. And I think that speaks about our lives just literally getting bigger and better because of Jesus in our lives. But he says you are supposed to sow these seeds out. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to store what Jesus has put in our barns, we want to give it away. And as you engage with people and share your faith, I just want to encourage you that everybody is fighting battles. We see this time and time again. People who we think everything's okay, but they're not. They're just like me and you. They're fighting battles. I set up a community group around the three rows of terrace houses where I live. And I, I just went around and put leaflets through people's doors, litter picking, yeah, planting trees, quiz night. And on two doorsteps, Two people basically opened up 
and told me about the challenges in life because I'd shared my life with them, I had relationship with them, and they shared their battles with me. And here's the truth, not everyone will respond. We, people say, well, not everybody's gonna be warm and friendly about it, they're not going to agree. Listen, we don't really agree on much. I think it's gotta be okay for someone not to agree with you, and you've not gotta feel in any way insecure about that. They just don't know Jesus yet, so how could they agree with what you're doing? However, we know that sharing your life, what Jesus means to you, your journey, your testimony about church, about friends, about community, about fellowship, about the impact he's had on your life is absolutely critical in the journey of someone finding and being discipled into his kingdom. We have shared our life. We've built a foundation of friendship and soil, good soil. We put the seed of our faith and we're going to go and look a little bit later on about how you're actually sharing Jesus. So please, let's be honest, feel the fear. I feel it, you feel it. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And watch what Jesus can do as you share your faith with people who you've already shared your life with. Please, please, please pray and ask God to help you doing this. And you will see some miracles as I have seen some miracles. So... Go on, go share your faith. Okay, so let's look a little bit further forward. So you shared your life, you joined a club, you set something up, you've made some friends, you shared your life, you've been interested in them. You've then felt the fear and told people that you are a Christian, that you go to church, about the community, about your faith. You've talked about your faith. Well, now the final one. As you have shared your life and as you've shared your faith and you've been a support to someone or you've been help, helpful, listen, you are creating some really good ground. And in the parable of the sower, Jesus says that in the good ground, the seed grows really well. And we believe that what we have already done in sharing our life and sharing our faith and being interested with other people's lives, that upon this soil, you can begin to plant some seeds. People will be interested in your faith because you've been interested in their life. You've shared who you are. They like you, they're interested in you. And I've noticed that people, even though I haven't told them that I'm a Christian or anything, I've started asking me questions and coming and seeing me. It's an absolute miracle. You must, must be okay about talking about Jesus. So we're just gonna watch this short video again and it's going to give you some ideas about how you and me i'm in the same place as you can actually start to share jesus in a really natural wonderful way so let's watch this video how to share jesus so you've got here you've shared your life you've built relationships and friendships you've shared your faith you've shared how faith has impacted your life and now which we believe is the most important part of this journey, is how to share Jesus. Let me first of all say this loud and clear. You are not convincing anyone. You're not convincing people. That's not what you're doing here. People finding Christ, finding faith, is a work of the Holy Spirit. And you need to know that Jesus is with you in this time. In Isaiah 41, this is what it says here. It says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Jesus is going to help you. And to bring his help as you take the pressure off is to make sure that you're praying. You'll see lots of prayers in our resource section, but please make sure that before you meet someone, before someone comes to your home, before you get an opportunity, please make sure that you pray and ask for God's help. So, what do you actually do? Well, we believe that one of the great things that Jesus did in Matthew 16 is he asked some really good questions. He said this. So he basically said to the disciples, he said, who do people say the son of man is? So he's asking them, what do other people say? And then he goes, but what about you? Who do you say I am? And we believe that is a really, really clear direction for all of us to share our experience of what Jesus has meant to us. What is he to you? Is he a help? 
Is he someone you turn to? Does he give you a place of peace? Does he help you with worry? Is it amazing how he completely forgives you and that you've got a relationship direct to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? You need to say, who do you think Jesus is? What's your experience? What is your experience of Jesus? And at this stage, after you've shared your life and you've shared your faith and you're sharing Jesus, you need to move into the next kind of stage of inviting people into an environment where they are going to find out more about Jesus. Paul, who was the guy who led me to the Lord, he shared his life, he shared his faith, and then he shared Jesus. It was clearly he had a relationship with Christ. There was something of the Holy Spirit that grabbed me, but he did this very, very special thing, which we would encourage everybody to do. He said, would you like to? And then in his case, he said, come to church on Sunday. But the would you like to come to our house to meet some other Christians? Would you like me to pray for you? Would you like to come to Alpha? Would you like to? Is a phenomenal thing for you to do. And don't forget, you are not trying to convince anyone. You are simply giving them an invitation to find out more about Jesus. And please remember, his grace is sufficient for yours and for mine whenever we fall short. This is a journey. It's about building your confidence by starting easily and building on relationships. So please, please understand, Jesus' grace is there for you again and again and again. But please don't give up. If at first you don't, or you're not able to do this, don't give up, pray, ask for his help, go again, feel the fear, do it anyway. Come on, come on, come on. This is where by the using of a few words, you could help the Holy Spirit make a transformational difference in people's lives, just as Jesus did to mine. So let's go. Let's share our life. Let's share our faith. But let's make sure we share Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So let's go and share Jesus and watch his Holy Spirit use me and you to transform people's life as they too find relationship in Christ. Somebody asked me recently, how do I share Jesus? I don't know where to start. Well, this is obviously my own training school with a very, very quick lesson. But I often think to myself, in this next sentence, I'm going to mention one of these words. I'm going to say something about church. I'm going to say the word Jesus and say something. I'm going to talk about faith and what it means to me. I'm going to mention the Bible. I'm going to talk about how I pray. That is beginning to share Jesus. You have to have the confidence that you can talk about what Jesus is and who he was and how it impacts you naturally. It's not weird. It's just, it's just how Jesus has impacted your life. And as you would imagine, for me, I'm really grateful 30 years ago, that one man called Paul, he shared his life with me and then he shared his faith with me, but he didn't stop there. He shared Jesus. There is a boldness and a confidence that is needed as you do not throw away your confidence. And in Hebrews 10 verse 35, this is what Jesus says. It says this, it says, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and not delay. And my righteous one will live by faith. And if they shrink back, I will not be pleased with them. But we, this is Johnny Boy and Lizzie, this is you, we are not those who shrink back and they are destroyed, but of those who believed and are saved. Let's be honest. The research tells us that seven, eight or nine out of 10 Christians, in essence, have somehow lost their confidence, thrown it away, have lost their sense of it's okay to be a Christian, have lost their sense of Jesus or been able to speak openly about him. And those verses really, really do say that we shouldn't throw our confidence away. So what's that confidence that we're, we've thrown away? Is it confidence in yourself that you've thrown away? Well, yes and no, but not really. Is it about the Isaiah 61 movement or the Isaiah 61 app? Hey, we hope that you enjoy the app. We hope it gives you some encouragement. We hope it helps your journey, but please, your confidence hasn't got to be in the app. 
It's absolutely not. Listen, you need to put your confidence in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said that he had anointed you to preach good news. He said it. He started his ministry with those verses. You have to not throw away your confidence that Jesus can use little old you to share your life, to share your faith, and to share Jesus. And what I would say is don't estimate what God can do through you. Don't say, I can't. Don't say, it's only me. Listen, the people in your life are only in your life. Jesus may have specific people that he's really, really wanting you to befriend, to deepen friendship, to step out and share what Jesus means to you and your faith. So there you have it. The Isaiah 61 movement. It's all designed for you to take simple steps to set goals. Slowly, slowly beginning to share your life, your faith and Jesus. Over the next three months, yeah, it's pretty important. This is our first ever trial. There will never be another trial. There will never be another group of people who were the first to see the app. We really want to ask you to step out with us in this, to go download the app, to have a look at it, to talk about it in your midweek group or talk about it as a couple. What can you do? How can you begin this journey? And I want to encourage you, the joy of being used by God to play a significant part in one person turning to Jesus is well worth <clears throat> your struggle. It's well worth you stepping out a little bit in faith. It's well worth you carving out a bit of time for others. It's well worth you getting this app and putting some goals in it. Trust me, the prize and the joy is worth the effort and it's worth the challenges. So, Kerith, no pressure. No pressure at all. And here's the truth. I don't know what's going to happen to Isaiah 61 movement. I don't know what God's going to do with it. But I want to let you know, if Jesus wants this to be a worldwide phenomena, if he wants to use this movement to change the way that Christians engage with evangelism, to turn the dial of the UK church, do you know what? That is fine by me. But God has deemed that we would trial it here. And I'd like to finish on these verses. I speak them over me, and I speak them over you. I speak them over the Isaiah 61 movement and everybody involved. In Ephesians 3 verse 20, it says this. It says, Now to him who is able to be immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power, his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let us not throw our confidence that Jesus is still on the throne and he wants you and me to engage in sharing the good news of Jesus in a way that we can all do it. And listen, I've seen God take me from a small bedroom office over 25 years ago in Bradford to start helping a few people whose lives were shattered by debt. I've seen the immeasurable, the more than I can dream imagine as cats spread around the world. And I am believing that God is with us. We are on the case of what he is on the case about. And I pray that you've been encouraged and inspired as you begin to journey with Isaiah 61. But more importantly, you begin to journey with each other and with Jesus to share your life, to share your faith. And don't forget, you've got to share Jesus. Thank you.